Hello, and welcome to Veterinary Journal Club. Uh, I'm excited for another great show today. This one's a little bit different. We are bringing back a couple of familiar voices, but new faces to the YouTube channel, and um, and one new voice and face to the podcast. So um, we will we'll start with um, introductions. Full disclosure. Um, this is me just kind of gathering my friends so we can chat about stuff. <laughs> uh, but we're going to make it a relevant talk, I think. I'm excited about it. But um, yeah, so Dr. Kat Temple is the new addition to the podcast, new to the podcast. Kat, welcome. Thank you very much. Excited to have you here. Everybody remembers Dr. Carl Southern, who's been on the podcast a few times. Carl? Hello, hello. How are everybody doing? Good. Glad to have you back. And uh, you. my very, very first podcast guest slash co-host, Dr. Sam Camp. Uh, ah, you were Dr. <laughs> Sam Campos when we started it, and she's now actually Dr. <laughs> Sam Wigglesworth. I knew I was going to screw that up. Um, and uh, yeah, and a new addition. Actually, we had two new additions. Um, but Wyatt Wigglesworth as well. Um, so yeah, <laughs> who's not napping. <laughs> oh, but look at him. And okay. How old is Wyatt again? He's three months today, actually. Three months today. Yeah, Holy nice. mackerel. Oh, and his first podcast. He's way ahead of the curve. <laughs> Doing very well. So welcome everyone. So excited to have you guys here. We, uh, Tover had the idea, because he has most of the ideas of what we're going to talk about, um, that we, we chat on the podcast a fair bit about like mental health and like, uh, you know, other aspects of veterinary medicine besides just like the medicine. But we don't really talk about the details of like, what do you actually do outside of veterinary medicine at various stages of your career? Um, so like when you're in school, what do you do to try to maintain balance? Or maybe you don't do a very good job of that. Um, what about during an internship residency? And then maybe when you get to your final job. So, um, yeah, thought we would just kind of have a chat about because we all went to different schools um, and so have slightly different experiences. And then like what was happening in our personal lives at the time, at least what I know about your guys' personal lives at the time, because I didn't know any of you when you were in school. Um, I guess Kat, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. not really, though. I think we ever worked I wasn't, together. I wasn't, I wasn't super close with you when you were a student because yeah. I don't I, I try to keep that separation <laughs> between me and the students anyway. But uh, but yeah. So that's the chat. Um, again, you're all on video too. So whatever that's worth, cool. you're on YouTube now. Congratulations. Um, so Kat, we're going to start with you just because you're the newest uh, inductee <laughs> to the podcast. So, um, so at any stage, it doesn't have to be when you were a student, but like, tell us a little bit about, you know, something that you did now before, like to help, like, what do you do outside of vet med? So I, uh, I tried to find a way that I could kind of center myself and kind of be in my own head with my own thoughts, but in a more positive way, mm -hmm. because the residency was so heavy. Um, and I gave every part of myself on most days to everything I was doing, especially my patients. And so I wanted to take a minute in outside of that, when I was in the residency to try to figure out, uh, how to center myself and kind of, you know, who, who was I in that moment? And I ended up doing a lot of gardening, but while I was gardening, I was doing, um, I was listening to a lot of podcasts ironically. Ah. Uh, and so I did a lot of Ted talks and I did a lot. And then I started kind of finding like cereal and like those kinds of fun stories. What is cereal? Um, is that about serial killers? No, it's oh. so good. It's <laughs> honestly some of the best podcast series. They just, Second a lot best. of them are investigative, but they are phenomenal stories. And there's a range of different stories that they tell. Is it cereal uh, with an S or cereal with a C? S. Okay. S. I thought yeah, we were talking about then, breakfast, but. No, no. And I, I, what I realized I was doing actually was just mundane, repetitive things. I actually just didn't have to think about. Yeah. So, um, that's what I actually, cause I, I thought, wow, I really like gardening and it, it's not actually gardening. It's the mundane, just uh, the dirt. repetitive thing that you don't have to think about. Um, and you're just, but you're still in your own like world. And well, so you're I still started, accomplishing something too, which is, yeah, cool. yeah. And still being a, yeah, exactly. And cause I, that's that was cool. the other thing in the residency when you are not physically at work accomplishing a, a you know, trying to save a life, you are 
at home, usually glued to your couch or something, not, not Dr. Southern because he's got two little kids. Uh, that was never the case for him. But um, for me, I would just kind of melt into, I don't want to do anything. And then I felt like my days passed and were unused. And I yeah, was really now you get that bad. report. The phone tells you like, <laughs> yeah. you spent five yeah. hours doing nothing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. <laughs> And there so, were days where like what like binge watching was actually somewhat fun, yeah. but like doing mm-hmm. that just mindlessly was not good. And so I also learned during that time that there was a difference between um, resting and being energized, like doing something that energizes you versus something that rests you. Yeah. Uh, because sure, you're going to rest while you sleep and maybe you do need a rest and need a nap at some point. Um, but what energizes you? And those were the things that I started trying to do. And that's what I actually found in the residency really helped me recenter myself. And I know you, Dr. Connor, you were my mentor during the residency. So you knew me quite intimately. And there was, there was a pretty ugly period of time where, I mean, my marriage was a little bit rocky. My state of uh, my just mental health at that point was a little rough. Um but obviously got through it. And that was kind of how I came out on the other end was trying to accomplish these mundane tasks that still showed I was accomplishing something, but allowed me to not think. Yeah. So how often did you, did you like go out and weed every day or did you have like a big project? I'm going to go to the weekend and I'm going to do all of the mulch and all of the plants or was it like, how often did you do this? Is it a little bit, a little, or do you, a ton it at was, once. Honestly, it was, uh, it started with gardening and to becoming other things too, but it ended up just being off, at least one day of my days off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I would do. So like once a week you would take a, like a reset. Yeah. That's assuming I got one day a week off, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, that was the goal. Um, that was the goal. So it also ended up evolving into, we got, I just needed water. I'm a water girl. So we bought a $300 Walmart pool, put that in the backyard and honestly cleaning the pool, just that, that cleaning yeah. of pool and like listening to my music or my podcast, but still accomplishing something. It was, yeah. I yeah. felt so accomplished and I yeah. would do it in my bathing suit. So I get a tan at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's what I found helped me specifically in the residency. I don't have to do that as much now because I have a lot more time and I'm in much more control of what's happening in my life. That'll that will happen one day, Carl. You're almost there. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> so you touched on something and I want to, I want to circle back to this and hear it kind of from everybody, but you mentioned like how hard training was on your relationship. And I think that's such a common thing that we don't really talk about. And um, for me personally, um, I didn't meet Topher until after I'd finished all my training for I'd lucky. been faculty for a few years. Smart. I was lucky. Smart, Smart is what that was. Like, Very I, lucky Topher. That was lucky. Lucky for, for him. Yeah. 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 Um so he didn't have to go through all that. Uh-uh. Um and um so uh, y- there are pros and cons with that, of course. And we can chat about that. But like everybody else was in kind of different stages throughout that as well. So um now you only have to share what you're comfortable sharing with the world. We have dozens of followers. So keep that in mind. Um, but, um, but yeah, Sam, Carl, maybe you guys can chime in as well. Like, you know, how, how was training, whether that was again, vet school or internship residency as that, you know, I've got to imagine there's times where that was a strain on your relationships. You want to go Sam? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think for me, actually, I, kind of used both vet school and I would say my post vet school training of internship and residency as kind of like a crutch. So I didn't Mm -hmm. probably didn't develop the relationship as further as I should and, and, and maintain the relationship. Like I should have, would we have parted earlier if I'd spent more time on it? Probably. Mm -hmm. Um, So I actually ended up ending my relationship during residency and it was a 12 year long relationship. So that was a, that was a long time. Um, But obviously a lot changes through all of those Mm -hmm. things. Uh, I think um, someone actually, I think in reference to babies was calling it seasons of their life, you know, the seasons of the baby, newborn and stuff like that. And I, I'm trying to like, think about my, my own life as like, there's different seasons of it. Yeah. And I think, um, you just progress through different things. And at least for me, I mean, I'm, I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I went through all of those things because I'm a way different person now than I was then And the relationship that I'm in now is 
a bajillion times different than the one I was in before. So for me, it was almost therapeutic <laughs> to go through that. Um, granted, could I have done it, you know, and, and saved myself some time? Maybe, but whatever, the end result was great. So, you know, that's, and that's the, the most important thing. So for me, it was kind of a, a blessing in disguise, though there were definitely rough patches within So you kind of like put off, you're like, I'm just not going to deal with that because I have this other thing was, to focus on. It was on. so easy to. And then I, I think I didn't, what I didn't realize was that I enjoyed staying late there because then I didn't have to answer anything at home. Like I would literally go, I lived with my partner, um, but I would go home and be like, I can, I can just go to bed. And I probably should have, you know, that should have been a red flag. It was an excuse that- to avoid <laughs> dealing with your relationship. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the chronic exhaustion that is residency, you just kind of, you just kind of go with whatever. That's a little different do. though, Sam. Like, I feel like most people like the, the, you know, internship residency school, whatever is like a catalyst and is like forced, like opens up problems in the relationship where for you, you were like, I'm just going to put this off. I'm going to, it actually, the relationship maybe lasted longer than it otherwise would have, (laughs) um, which is a different, but I mean, I I totally get that too. You're just like, I can't deal with this. And partly it's, you know, who your partner is at the time too, like what they're willing to tolerate and, and, and not. So that's, that's another, you know, big issue. Um, because like Kat, you're, you're married to a veterinarian. Um, and so that's, there's, you know, pros and cons with that as far as like, they understand, but also they and understand. Carl. Um, Carl, they exactly. Understand. No, Carl too. Yeah. And, um, you know, Sam, your husband now, like he's not a vet, but he's, you know, kind of in, in the field a little bit. So, um, but so Carl, you and Brittany, do you, mm-hmm. you met, when did you guys meet in school? We met in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we met, like, yeah. Uh, we started, we didn't start dating until I think it was my fourth year of vet school. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I met her years before, sure. but she was dating somebody. Ah. Waiting until then, yeah. Ah. And girl. Hey. So, did you have to sabotage and that relationship, or you just bided your time? I think he sabotaged himself. <laughs> just... Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, and then so swooped in as the hero. Yep. Were, did you have yeah, your eye yeah. on her for a while? You're just waiting, or did it? Did, uh, honestly, no, I didn't. Okay, I, I honestly, you're like, she's off. Time. He was in vet school. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. Yeah, that was that was it. Over. That's studying. exactly right. <laughs> but I had my mindset on leaving school without. It being in a relationship, I had no aspirations of even dating a, a veterinary student or a veterinarian. Hey. I'm getting out of here. Hey. Sky free. Yeah. I'm, I'm the only one who followed here. through on that. I just yeah, like to point are. out. <laughs> hey, oh, aspirations. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But it's, but to kind of like speak to your question or your thought before, it is tremendously helpful to be married or in a relationship with someone that understands how much work you have to put into something, because I think that's probably a bigger issue. If I imagine for couples that are together and the other spouse may think they understand, but it's so impossible unless they've been through something similar to really understand why we were getting calls at all hours of the night, why we weren't home when we said we were going to be home why, you know, and then I could come home and just start talking about cases. I didn't have to describe what a disease was. That's, and then you just kind of like oh, start funny. going and going. And See, it it's was- the opposite for me. So I will say I have to give Topher a ton of credit because early on in our relationship, like he obviously didn't. So everybody listening, I think knows Topher's not a vet, but um, he never really had to like from my perspective, understand what I was going through to get it, to be like, yep, you got work. You got called in the middle of the night and that's what you got to do. That's yeah. your job. And I think what you said to me once when I was like, oh, he's a keeper was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't res- like you and respect you if you didn't want to do your job. well. Yeah. Like if you got a call in the middle of the night for some animal that was dying, you're like, mm, I think I'd rather sleep. He'd be like, what? Who yeah. are you? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you a vet? Trying to talk yourself like, oh, let's yeah. try to talk myself out of having to go in. He'd be like, what? Get your ass in there. Yeah. So, Thought um, you wanted to do this. Didn't like, you spend like nine years learning how to do this so you could do it? That's so like, like, that's the kind of support I get. Um, I mean, yeah. but like, that's so important for somebody to just be like, yeah, that's your job. Be good at it. Um, right. And to, to not, not make you feel guilty for doing it. Yeah. Quite the opposite. He'd make me feel guilty if I wasn't like, why aren't you going in to help? Um, so that, that's really important, but I'm the opposite of you, Kat, where I don't want to come home and talk about my cases. Um, no way. I mean, I'll talk about work a little bit, but it, it ends because he's like, I don't know what that means. He's yeah. getting well, better. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it was, you know, what's funny is that I found that I, really wanted to talk about the, the ones I loved. And I was, I was, Oh my God, this dog came oh, in. And 
X, Y, and Z happened and we got to surgery and it's doing great. And like those kind of like those like rushes that are like, this is why I'm doing this. Um, I found that without even realizing it, I did not talk about the cases that were really difficult, whether it was an emotional difficult or just the, the, like the case itself, uh, or the owner, maybe yeah. the, the client conversation, because maybe weeks later, another resident mate, maybe Sam at the time, um, or Carl, or one of the other ones would kind of say, Oh, mention that case. And I would kind of be like, yeah, Andy, I'm sure I told you. And he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> And then I'd be like, oh, I guess I really don't talk about the ones that I don't want to go back and remember. So for what it's worth. Yeah, that's fair. I I mean, and maybe that's better for your relationship, right? To not just come home and like complain about all the crummy things. Um, Because that's finding that balance, right? Like having that sounding board is great. But also like if all you're ever doing is coming home and complaining, um, that's maybe not the greatest. So I don't know. But Okay, so think back to before you were in your current committed relationships. Like, what was your social life? Like, how was dating? Oh, man. <laughs> silence. Radio <laughs> silence. It was that good, huh? Well, well they, no, dating was fun, to be honest. It was before, yes, I, before I met Brittany. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was fun before you met that. Brittany. <laughs> It sounds terrible, but dating was fun. Yeah. So how do you date as a vet if you get like so few days off? What was the question? How do you date as a vet? Like, do you do you have to get like your planners together? It's like okay, and in two and a half months we're going to Fridays. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, well, if you if you look at it as because when you finish vet school, if you don't do internship or residency, you have a pretty much a, a solid schedule. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's pretty pretty good. I mean, you have you know, solid hours, most time, unless you work in some crazy, like two or three jobs, you have a pretty structured schedule and you can plan things and date and, yeah. and go out. I dated I, during my internship and residency, even though like, yikes, I know. No, I mean, not a ton, but I did. And what about I, during I vet school? That. Cause I have a bunch yeah. of friends that went to grad school and it was just like every Saturday or Friday night. I didn't go. They went often. out. It was not that often. Yeah, like, no, no, no. I, Every I did, Friday, I, I didn't. Okay, I, 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 didn't, I, I had a girlfriend in vet school. I think I was, I was single all. Well, not vet dating, school. just like but they like, would just, go out to the bar. Or just and, going out. Yeah. Oh do no, the vet no, that, was, do that, that wasn't me though. Like, no, I, I, I didn't would, do that I would, either. My outlook would be like, if if I got anything, it would be to go play basketball or mm-hmm. play like NBA two K or something like that. Okay. That would be my outlet. Did anybody else get set up on blind dates, or was that just me? Did that one time and never did that mess again. It's the worst because you know what, you know what friends do? They go, Oh, I have somebody who'd be perfect for you. And then you find out later that the perfect is they are also single. Yeah. That is, (laughs) that is the criteria I have learned that people are like, Oh, I know a single person. I know a single person. They should, they would be perfect for each other. And you're like, do you know either of us at all? Like, yeah, I actually, I did, did I did one time I did in undergrad. I did two. I did two different Never times again. once. And then like three years later, I allowed a second one. And then I was like, okay, that's the end of that. Yeah, I had a good um, one one time. Story, when I was some good in, stories though. When I finished undergrad, it was, I was probably, I don't know. I was in my mid twenties and uh, it's like, oh, we got the perfect girl for you, whatever. And it was this very religious um, dance girl who was like 19 or 20. And I was like, what does guys- dance girl mean? She did. She was into dance. Okay. So I don't, I don't <laughs> dance. <laughs> dance girl. Yeah. yeah I don't dance. dance. And then dancer. like my idea of fun back then was going to the bar. And so she like, th- those two don't work. And then I'm not religious. So it's like, <laughs> why were we a match? <laughs> because you were both single. Yeah. That is, that is the criteria. I don't know. If you, guys, if you guys ever want to set a friend up on a blind date, please, please make sure they have more in common than you're not dating anyone. Hmm. You're not, in, you're not in a relationship. Match made in heaven. No, no, not <laughs> it's it. not. not trying it. <laughs> the worst. No. So how was that in uh, your guys' vet schools? Like people dating Ooh, so much in between the class. Was that a lot of everybody's classmates? It was yeah. bad. It was yeah. terrible. I dated they, no their one. Their relationships blow up. Yeah. I dated no one. Like, watch. Mm-mm. It was like, yeah, you don't need TV. You can just watch what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it was. Literally. So I actually didn't even pay attention to that. Cat was one of them though. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm real about that. Yeah, so, she and Andy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Andy and I were that. the first class couple, 
Oh, that uh, sounds like one of those things in your yearbook that you get a title first class. Yeah. Couple. <laughs> when, when you establish that, how, how fast was this? Listen, so uh, like, let's call it like August 26, something like that was our orientation. And I don't remember August 27th. Let's call it something like that. By we became friends. We we're in the same circle. I had been dating someone who I stopped dating going into vet school shortly after. And I really didn't want to date anyone, but Andy and I were friends and like, you could kind of tell there was something between us. Um, and then I eventually decided in my own head, I wouldn't keep him in the friend zone. If like, if it kind of evolved there naturally, which it did. And by October 11th, October we 11th, a couple and never looked back. You that know, the after- date, how yeah. do you date? I'll be in it's trouble with our anniversary. I know our anniversary. I just don't know how many years it's been. October 11th. Yeah. October. Do you know when we wow. met? Huh? Do you know when we met? We met. Do you know when we first dated? Yeah, me neither. So let it, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what year. I don't know what year we met. No. I, don't even, I know what year know we got married years. because we printed bags for the people who went to the wedding and I have to refer yeah, to Yeah, we go look that. at the cooler bag. We have to go check the guy. Like, what year was it again? I think Brittany and I started dating in 2010, started dating, and we got married in 2013. Good on you. I think ours was probably a couple years. It must, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. October 11th, though. That, I'm October 11th? Like, wow. Yeah. Like, did October you guys do, did you guys do something to, like, commemorate that? Like, why, how, why do you remember that date? I don't know. Yeah. Ah, uh, 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 no, we need to know. <laughs> but there's something about it. No, it's not. No, like, I mean, I think. I don't actually know why I remember it, but we def- I de- definitely was. Would then. Andy remember it if we asked him what date? Because think, you say it all the time or? I don't do know. I think it? you'd actually have to ask him. Okay. But I guess I call him. Text him. Yeah. He's <laughs> call him in your, in your, from your giant house. <laughs> he's going to be like, man, you pause on my game for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. If all right. Comes up. Put him on the spot. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to put him on the spot, but we, so the fun story is that we decided we weren't going to tell anyone and literally that day it was around Halloween. So we were going to go to Walmart to just get like Halloween costumes and like locked hands to hold hands and driving in front of us was a car full of classmates and they yelled <laughs> hands, hands. Wow. It was over. <laughs> Wait, they were driving. How were you holding hands in the car? Where they- no, no, he, we were walking. Oh. They were walking. Okay. And I was they, like, like this we were going to cross safe. the Walmart gotcha. and they were driving in front of Walmart, like the actual yeah. store. Yeah. And I was like, I know all of 100 people in this city. How is this happening? <laughs> because wherever you go, you see people from vet school everywhere. I don't know about yeah, the rest yeah. of you. I was like, don't make eye contact. Don't yeah, they have those bumper stickers and you just see them around everywhere. everywhere. It's yeah, ridiculous. Everywhere. Or they, in Virginia, everybody has a personalized license plate for some reason. And they all end in DVM. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Cool. That's not entirely true, but yeah. Yeah, well, at least like 50 of them. <laughs> Sam, do you remember like... Same when Carl, you and no. Alex like officially start, do you, do you know the date? Mm, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just you, Kat. You're the only one who cares about I it. I guess. general month. And yeah. I know the day that I broke up with my other, my ex-boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. Because it was Cinco de Mayo. You know, it's just. Oh, know, okay. Was- that makes it easier to remember. <laughs> so break up with people on a holiday so you can remember. When- yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's ter- Don't do that. That's terrible advice. Um, so that was it. So Andy, you started dating at the beginning of vet school and, and the rest is history. Um, and then he got married two hours after graduation. Two that was hours it. later. Hours. Boom. No wedding. We just oh, yeah. set yeah. our vows. No rings, nothing. Boom. Yeah, no rings over here either. Yeah. I, I have one now, please. Oh. <laughs> Where's my ring? No, I'm kidding. I don't have one. You don't, do you have one, Carl? No? Does Brittany? Yeah, she does. Yeah. I, I have like, a ring. I don't she wear gave me a ring, but oh. I, don't, I don't wear it. We decided no rings. In fact, yeah. I think he said that. He's like, if we got married, would you even want a ring? Because he's a romantic. Yeah, it's idolatry. <laughs> it's idolatry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, so any other like dating stories or, or like just, I don't know, hanging out with friends? How did you like, did you, is it one or the other? Yeah. Did you hang out with friends from vet school or yes. was it other people that you met? Uh, in vet school for well, me, it was all vet school people. Or... I went, I went to undergrad in vet school at the same place. So I, I still had some friends from undergrad for a little while that when I, when I first started vet school, so we didn't hang out much, but it was a, a buddy of mine who went to high school together oh, wow. and we ended up going to, to the same went to Tuskegee for undergrad. Both of us did. Boom. And, um, like for a year, 
you know, about a year, he was still there. We would hang out sometimes, play basketball, but most times it was all vet school people. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, for me, it was vet school, like in vet school, it was only vet school friends, except occasionally like you'd keep up with, you know, some of my friends from undergrad and whatnot. But then when I got um, to the residency, that's when I started, I actually made friends outside of, of the residency, which was, I mean, I had friends inside the residency, but I, I was playing pickup volleyball really regularly. And so I made friends mm. from that. And that was so important for me. Like for me You're personally. NC State, right? Yeah. Um, and they had this really nice, they were like, Four, actually six, but four good sand volleyball courts with lights. Um, and I started going um, regularly. There was one and sometimes two other people from the vet school that also would go sometimes, but like not always. Topher. Um, it wasn't Topher. I hadn't met no. him yet. Uh, I was only um, We a met couple times. playing volleyball later. That was later, but during uh, um, during the residency. And so we, I would go and I would spend hours not talking about work at all. And it was amazing. Yeah. So, and then I did a few things other than volleyball with those people. Um, and, you know, they, they occasionally be some other social thing that, um, you know, you get invited to, but it was just for me personally, it was really nice to have other friends. And I hung out with people in my residency as well, my resident mates and, and some of the fat, you know, like, you know, you get really close with those people, obviously. Um, but, um, but I, it was nice because as you all know, it's very easy to get together and talk about work. Um, and I need a break from that. Like mentally, I'm like, no, I need to talk about something else. And it's a conscious effort when I hang out with other vet people to talk about other things. Yeah. Cause Um, you don't have much going on other than Because you're so busy. That's all you do. And so that this is what we have in common. But, um, but it's nice when you can find a friend where you have something else in common, um, or a partner, you know? And, and so for me, that's, that was huge. Yeah. And like for Andy and I, we, whenever we get together and he's really just like you, he's very intentional about not talking about work. And so what we found is that uh, because vet med is mostly female now, it, I mostly had just, you know, my resident mates were mostly female and then our spouses are of the opposite sex. And so all the boys would kind of not be in vet med and he doesn't like talking about vet med. So he would gravitate so that, with that. That would help in balancing the conversation. Yeah. And then as the friendships grew into more of a strong friendship versus just dependent on our work, right. then we were able to just- Everyone to, could talk about other things. Yeah. 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 So, which I think Sam and I can attest to, we became pretty good friends when she was my resident mate and then my faculty. And, uh, and then since then, since we're both diplomats, it's just great having someone I could talk to about that med, but also anything else. Yeah. Uh, because, but, but the foundation started with that med and, yeah. and, but having Andy as she, he's kind of taught, he would always be like, let's stop talking about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that was helpful to kind of bring me back. I I'm Andy's very responsible for a lot of the great things about me. <laughs> so uh, he takes a, a lot of credit. Yeah. Your parents get nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> well, because Sam, like with Alex, um, you know, he's from like where when you guys met, um, he's from that area. So he had a lot of friends already that he kind of brought to that relationship that are outside of vet med as well. Yeah. Um, so I imagine that helped you kind of, or maybe you thought that was terrible. <laughs> Like, who are they? I just, I need somebody. No, it was, I mean, we don't, yeah, I don't, I don't talk a lot. I mean, I, I don't, I mention cases at home occasionally and he picks up like cool words. Like <laughs> he was obsessed with the word Billy Rubin for a while. I <laughs> that, um, he'll, he'll do things like that. But yeah, once, when we're out with his friends, like it's never, we never talk about it. And he always tells his friends too, that if they want pet advice, he's going to charge them. And he'll like, keep saying that. That is so such a good he's partner. Like, oh, look at this dog. Yeah. You should do that. I guess your so friends smart. don't really ask too much, but I love that he, he looks out for you in that way. Yeah, no, her time is valuable. You're yeah. Good for him. That's the business <laughs> yeah. sense in him too. <laughs> um, that's Thank awesome. You. But like, that's, that's a bit of a, a, a tricky thing too, though. Right. If you're like, you're, you've partnered up and now you have somebody who's got this whole, you know, group of friends and you're like, now I'm the outsider <laughs> too. Like, yeah. I imagine that can be a challenge as well. It, it can be, I think, I mean, that's, I don't know how to say this without being, I don't want to be, I don't want to be offensive, but like we were, <laughs> it makes it sound can't worse. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, at least for his group of friends, they're, they're really laid back. They're, 
like it's usually drinking and things like that. And I tend to be the more low key one anyway. And so I always, I mean, that makes me feel a little bit of the, you know, the outsider anyway, but now I have my own like built in activity thing right here. (laughs) Hey, there's Andy in the background. Andy, do you know the answer to this question? All right. You're on the spot, Andy. Hi. Hi. Andy is also a vet. Uh, and so the, the quiz question for you, Andy, is uh, what was the date that you and Kat officially started dating? October 11th. Boom! Day in the morning. All right. Did she text you the answer? Oh, I'm texting about a case. Oh, I'm getting a that's text worse. My <laughs> technician wow. is me, so I'm texting her back. Well done, Andy. No hesitation. Wow. It's good that you both know that because the rest of us don't know any of these dates. No way. So, yeah, no way. Yeah. Oh, okay. The year. Pretty heavily. I think <laughs> I think Topher actually gave was it Andy that you gave the advice to? There was what was it the was it Valentine's Day? So um, oh, we're really good at remembering I'm very sentimental and you it was Valentine was it Valentine's Day? It's but Valentine's he, Day. He gave me the same card, the exact same card yeah. every year for Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I remember this. And story. I didn't know about it until I didn't he buy t- it. I got it from her when she was done with it and then I put it in a drawer. You for mean you. I gave it to you first? No, oh. no, you didn't. Oh, oh no, no, no. Okay, so he you gave me the I card. It back. He would take it back, put it back in the envelope, hide it somewhere, and give it to me again the next year. Wow. And he did that. I had no clue. <laughs> Zero clue. The only reason I found out was he came He came into um, to work one day, and I think it was it. What were you guys talking? Kat and Andy were talking about something. Andy had to get like a Christmas card. Oh, yeah. Andy had to you. do this. He, had he to, like, was supposed write to make a, a Christmas card or something like that. And Tom was like, and I have some, some advice song. for you. You could try I this. this story. I and I was like, are, he goes, I might get in trouble for this. And he tells the story. I was like, are you serious? I had I no idea at all. Wow. And then, and then when I found the card, when we were moving and I was like, oh, the edges are kind of ratty. <laughs> like I should have noticed that. <laughs> he probably oh, could have gotten away with that for decades. Turn your camera, Sam. Turn it. Oh. Alex, is that you? You joining us? There you oh, hey. Yo. How's it going? Welcome. I'm just You're a on- working man. You know, <laughs> yeah. just got off work. You're just coming just home from work? work. Yeah, you know, the, the new clinic's really, you know, Look at this, keeping these, me on the ground. These are late hours for him. He I know. Yeah, wh- what time I is it there? It's 7.20. All right, so now you can hand off the baby, oh, okay. though, right? Okay. That baby's asleep. <laughs> it's staying where it is. Stay where he is, exactly. Fair. Yeah, Carl knows. <laughs> we're training, we're training him to sleep through the noise. That's, that's what this is about right yeah. now. We said, all right, we need you to learn. It's really important, right, Carl? You need to teach those exactly. babies to sleep yeah. through anything. Don't, don't whisper. Don't, yep. don't do all exactly. the quiet. Yeah, just you don't talk wanna, normal. Yep, yep. So He's we're working on that. Right now, it's like dripping on my arm. He looks but pretty hey, comfy. It's good to see all of you guys. <laughs> you too. You too. Yeah. yeah. Congrats yeah. on the new, the new job. How are you guys liking the new place? It's good. It's good. It's busy. Um, it's definitely way different than UF. Yeah. On many fronts, but, um, <laughs> but practice. it's refreshing. It's just, Sometimes yeah, you it's just need to like change a whole pace. New system and yeah. everything else. So yeah. Computers, cool. technology. Yeah. Technology. Outside of that, pretty busy. We like it. Good. We like it. It's good good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you guys. So we're keeping it casual for this podcast, so that's good. <laughs> all right, I have another at school question. Okay. All right, for all four of you, or five now, now that we got oh, Andy. Yeah. Um, what's something that got away with you, like away from you, like say weight, hygiene, something that you really like? I really like reading all these books, and now I'm five books behind because all I do is study. And and then how did you hopefully fix that? Like. Like say it's like yeah. you wake up one day, it's like, wow, I mm. weigh 40 pounds more than I did three years ago. Oh, Maybe I'm I should go for a walk. <laughs> no, I, I never really lost or gained any weight, to be honest. The thing that I changed was I like to work with the youth groups at church. Mm. And it was just impossible to do as a student, a vet student. It was really impossible. So as soon as I finished vet school and I went to work, that's the first thing I picked up. I got back active in the church again. Nice. And I was right back with the youth groups. And you were thinking it the again. whole time you were in vet school. It's like, this is something I that it. I need to do. And as soon as yeah. I am able I to. I tried it. I tried to do it, but it's, it's when it there's well. not a, there's no, the time commitment to vet school is just too much. So mm-hmm. I, I couldn't commit. And you can't commit. be reliable. Exactly. I couldn't commit and, and be in charge of something that I knew I couldn't show up to. So I had to just drop it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Looking back, is there like a, 
a way that you think you could have done it better. So it's like, say uh, you're with a youth group and you're in charge of something, you're not going to be able to do that, but maybe like volunteer. Once yeah. Volunteer like, Hey, I can't be in yeah. charge, but can I show up when I can show up Would that yeah. work for you guys? That, that's what, that's what I should have done is just, you know, came when I could, but I like to be I like to be the way I am. I like to just commit all the mm-hmm. way. I like I to know. be in it all the time. So it's hard for me to like show up here Go and then come back for four months and then yeah. you know, see you again in six months. It's just hard for me to do it. So I was like all or none for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, for me, it was, um, you know, I, when I, when I was an undergrad, I, I was on the softball team. And so like, that was like my regimented, you're doing this kind of a thing. And when I first got to vet school, I was like, I'm not doing anything active at all. And, and that was hard because it used to be somebody else was scheduling it. This is when you have practice and then you have games and you're traveling, blah, blah, blah. And so that was really good. So I was, I got really like sedentary. I, I don't, I didn't weigh myself cause that's depressing, but, um, mm-hmm. But I just wasn't active and I was kind of bored. And, um, but I, so what I did though is I started like, you know, getting other people involved and we, we ended up creating a, um, like a, what, there's the president and the treasurer and then there's all, what I don't remember you, an officer, like a class officer. And we created a, an activities or an exercise, but I don't remember what we called it, sports something or other. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm starting a thing. And so I just um, started like a running club and then that didn't work because then I threw my back out and had to have surgery, but blah, blah, blah. Um, But I tried to, then I started engaging other people in um, playing racquetball because we had racquetball courts like right across from the vet school. And so I found a few people like, so I just, it was harder though um, because it was, it wasn't somebody else organizing it. And there wasn't this like regimented, you will do this at this time. And, and this is what's going on. So I, I definitely struggled with that. Um, and then like when I remember getting to clinics and like that just didn't happen anymore. Um, yeah. and then during my internship also really didn't happen. I was super unhealthy during my internship. I actually lost a lot of weight during my internship, but not in a healthy way. That was cause yeah. I was eating like one meal a day. Um, so it was not, it was not good weight loss. Um, <laughs> and then my residency kind of like went back the other way until I found like the volleyball. Um, so for me, it was always trying to find sports and something active to do. And I definitely had periods where I didn't do that well. And then I would just be like, I feel bad about myself. So I have to prioritize yeah. this. Um, but it was, it was definitely up and down for me. Yeah. How did that affect like Thank your, you. uh, like your, like schooling and way you would learn, like when you were sedentary, did you not do as well and then you're active you did better or is it the other way around it's like sedentary i do i need to knuckle down and get all these grades i think it's been a long time to remember those kind of details but um i actually like i'm like a lot of us are i'm one of the, the busier i am the more i get done right like i like okay when i have a schedule and i have a routine i'm gonna do better so i if, if i want to play volleyball i got to get this other stuff done so like it, it's, it's important to me to get my stuff done, be efficient, do the things I need to do so I can go do this. This is a reward for me. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think for me, I, I did better when I had more things to do if it was something I was looking forward to. Before children, I could procrastinate to no end. Like I could do something <laughs> and just get it done the last minute before children. But now that I have children, I have to actually do things ahead of time because who knows you know, I'll have that time at the yeah. end. Yeah, you might get hit with a dad to get it done. Yeah, yeah. You'll, at least for him for naps. When I'm like getting him ready to go down for a nap, I'm literally prioritizing. All right, I know I have like 32 minutes. I have laundry <laughs> in the dryer. I want that out and yeah. folded. I wanted to go through these other things. I needed to, to fill out these two forms. I need to let the dogs out, and then I just yeah. try and run through those things. It, it makes me a, a way more effective person. But I'm constantly thinking yeah. of like my to do list through the day. 32 yeah. minutes. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Very Literally, you know, 12, 12 to 2 is nap time. So, you know, whatever you have to do that you need to get done, you got to get it done during nap time. Or See, I feel day. like this is why we don't have kids, but I'd be like, uh, nap time sounds like nap time for everybody. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I know. I know. That's that's one of the reasons we don't have children. I think you're giving Andy <laughs> ideas for the future. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nap time is game time. Is game time. <laughs> I wish. But whatever you prioritize. Yeah. Naps. Naps. Um, no, it's tough. I think for me during vet school, I actually, I was, I think I had more problems in internship and residency, like maintaining myself. Um, not, not hygiene. Um, as far as like, <laughs> I know. Uh, I know when he said that, I was like, what? I just um, stopped brushing my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> it saved me three minutes a day. That's what I do when I get real busy. It's like, oh, I don't have time to shower. Whatever. Oh, oh no, no, no. That was a, I'll yeah. be late before I, before yes. I don't shower. I work yeah. with a lot of smelly people, so it's, you just blame the other guy. <laughs> it's, he's hundred percent being honest right now. <laughs> oh, Which one of you smells like, so bad? I, uh. This one. 
that guy. <laughs> It's like, no, I'm gonna, you're going to need to just take a few minutes and shower. <laughs> How you know someone's busy. You can just smell them. Wow, you must be really busy here. Really <laughs> busy. <laughs> he takes like a three-minute shower. I'm like, you can fit that in. You're never that busy. Anyway. I think, I think for guys, it's like the pre, I don't know, Topher, I know, you know, no one has to discuss this, like the pre-shower pooping, if that's really what they're doing in there on their phones or whatever that, that men do. Pooping? No? no. I, I, I'll, I'll do that, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Do that. Yeah. Does that do you Take schedule it. your poops around your showers or your showers around your poops? No, I'm actually pretty regular, so it's always <laughs> boom toilet right. then shower. Well, yeah. for there's you. also another option if there's a poop shower connection. Alex has recently oh become my a God, fan of bidets. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Trying to tell me to buy this damn bidet. I'm not. Oh, we, we got a got bidet. One. We just got a bidet. Oh. Okay, so we're we're remodeling our house and we're getting the new bathroom and we we had a bidet put in, so we haven't yeah. used it yet. Oh, yeah. I'm kind you of can buy I'm nervous and excited. I just imagine poop splattering it. Oh, come on. No, is it, is it, <laughs> <laughs> this is not where I thought this podcast was going to go today. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, we haven't used ours yet. So I'm, I'll report back to you, Kat. I'll yeah, let you know if we get splatters. <laughs> we'll podcast about it. You, can just, you should do a podcast we'll on the podcast about after. it. You yeah, a full review. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, but Sam, before we start talking about hygiene, you, had, you were going to say something. Oh yeah. Well, so like, in vet school, I, um, kind of what Topher was hinting on before, like I wasn't, I wouldn't be good at schoolwork, um, if I wasn't active. So like, and I also had a neurotic, um, puppy. So for me, walks were like important and I would just, you know, we would go, it was Philly. So you'd go anywhere. And also it was nice. Cause you'd feel like you were outside of vet school to just go on yeah. a trip and walk somewhere in Philly. So I would take her for walks once I felt like I wasn't getting anything more done studying wise. Um, I did hot yoga in Philadelphia because it was available nice. and they had like student packages that were priced really well. So uh, I think cool. during, and I, I just had more time in vet school, I feel yeah. um, internship and residency. I think I was just so exhausted all the time that I didn't do activities and Coca-Cola was like water to me. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I feel like so for good. any students that are listening, this is not intended to discourage you from doing an internship or a residency. I don't know about you. We'll take a quick poll. Um, if I could go back and do internship and residency again, I absolutely would do it in a heartbeat. What about the rest of you? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I, I, I would, no, I would do it the same way. I would just, Carl would I do still it the same wouldn't way. go right from school. I would yeah. still go to work and then. So, yeah. So for those that don't remember later. or don't know, Carl went out into the real world for a while and then came back. Um, yeah. So you would do it the same way. Cool. I'll do it the same way. Yeah. Cat? So you're kind of opening a can of worms. Yeah in this current situation that we're in vet med because uh and i'll speak for sam too because she's still newer to the Uh you know like the diplomat kind of situation we are the world of covid right now it doesn't matter what hospital you're in we are so busy that the compassion fatigue is overwhelming the uh just watch just seeing technicians try not to break down to my heart breaks when we turn cases away because I know that the dog wagging their tail can still be a septic <laughs> yeah. abdomen. That's not a thing they do. Um, yeah. Turn a case away. It's uh, it's the, all of it is really hard watching your colleagues feel like they're drowning. Um, and, and that's the part of, and then to be told that we're actually in an industry and we're not in medicine uh, and to probably realize that it's the truth, uh, that I basically entered an industry, not, um, meaning like a for-profit business, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which like you always oh, well. know that, but to actually be treated that way, uh, is it's just hard. And so it's, I, I wouldn't, I don't, wouldn't change being a criticalist, that part of it, I would not change though. Sometimes I actually dream about going back for a clinical pathology residency uh, of the lifestyle, which (laughs) was my original dream. I actually do daydream about that, but I would never do that. So you can wear your heels and your, and your dresses. So you wouldn't do it now. You wouldn't be like, start over. But like, if you could go back in time, my life, I think I would, you, you would do it. You would do a second one now. Yep. If he was not in my life and I would not be dictating another how sure. many years I probably would because this yeah. is it's becoming a lot yeah okay um, I gotta jump in I'm gonna jump in right here because yeah. for all the students who are listening I was just talking about this one of my friends earlier if you look at when um every time something 
let's say the pandemic happened. And then before that, what, what happened? Um, it was like, I remember what it was, but when the economy was terrible, yeah. if you look back to that. So when the economy was, was crap kind of. and you look at, yeah, I think it was nine or 10, something like that. And then I was in vet school when it happened. And then now the pandemic, every time vet med never, it has, never. A, has a, it never takes a hit. Like oh, sure we does. always end up working more or we yeah. end up having higher caseload. People spend more right. money. Like where you get the money from? Well, so or even if they spend less list, money, but they're still, the cases are still coming they're in. They're still coming. Sometimes yeah, exactly. that's actually harder, right? You get more cases, but they're like, yep. I have a tighter budget. And so have you're $2, having to, but yeah. here's 20 but, puppies. But fix them anyway. Yeah. 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 So are all the students listening, like vet med has shown over and over and over that this career is not most most likely not going to take a hit when the country crashes and blows up and destroys so for all the students listening like i told some graduates you're entering into the best profession no we don't make a million dollars but we have job security like you can go almost anywhere any state any city even a small little rural area and find a veterinary clinic you can say well i'm gonna work there and make and if not open one (laughs) yeah exactly you can open one so like i i agree with cat 100 percent. the compassion fatigue is terrible in this job in this profession but i think we need to do a big job of taking control of what we do and what we don't yeah you can reinvent yourself in this profession and stop being willing to work a million hours in a row like that's a whole different topic for another podcast that we should talk about we'll do that next week like (laughs) but we have we have a great so all the students like yeah don't get discouraged by the negative things that you yeah. might hear. From well, yeah. So what I like there. to say is like, have you heard of the league of out of work veterinarians? You guys nope. haven't? Cause it doesn't exist. It doesn't <laughs> it's exist. not a thing yeah. because yeah, <laughs> yeah, the people who aren't working in veterinary medicine have chosen not to. Um, I mean, it makes me sad when people are like, I, I wouldn't go back and do this again or, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, but you're absolutely right. Part of it, Carl is just, is not saying, Oh, I'll just accept whatever job I'm given is to say, no, let's, let's create yeah. the job that I want and, and, you know, be able to stand up for yourself. And I'm not saying like, I will only work four days a week, nine to five. Like if you can, if you can make that work good for you. Um, but I don't know that that's necess- like, that's not what would be fulfilling for me. Um, I think like Kat saying like turning away cases doesn't feel good. Like, but let's see, can we, we've got to find some, some middle ground here. Can we find a way um, to still get that fulfillment um, without like working ourselves to the, to the ground. But, um, but I still want to hear. Yeah, exactly. No, that goes for everybody, but I want to hear from Sam. um, Cause Sam, people may not recall or know was originally going to go and do a dentistry residency. Do you yeah. daydream about going back and either doing that again or, or changing your mind <laughs> like Kat does? Why would you do that? That sounds it's, terrible. It's, he likes to remove does, Chihuahua It's so teeth. gratifying. Like you're physically just doing something and making it all pristine. Oh, I do it every it makes day. my it's teeth hurt just bad. hearing that sound. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we, my job. yeah. When, no, Sam, when Sam was an intern, that's what, that's what she wanted to do. And we, we turned her yeah. to the dark side. Good. Yeah, I think it was a bunch of like all they were dentistry patients. It was a bunch of dead, like post arrest, sorry, um, <laughs> dentistry patients. And uh, I, I kind of, I guess, got a little bit afraid, like, oh, I'm, I'm doing I think for me, that decision was more of a I want to be a doctor that can do everything like an ECC mm-hmm. was a doctor who could do everything. Like sometimes you do preventative care. I'm going to give rabies vaccine to this dog that was attacked by another, another dog that wasn't vaccinated. Um, I'm going to do wound care. I'm going to do these things, but I also wanted to be the vet that could, you know, make things work and and give them like a bunch of different prices because Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I, how I grew up. It wasn't like, you know, you, Oh, you only have $5,000. Sorry. I can't help you. Kind of like sometimes a baloney. That's a a surgeon. I say that and we've had surgeons who will come do kind of a unique surgeries in the ER for cheap, but Um, that's what kind of pushed me in that direction. And I think, I mean, I love, I love, love my job. I love ECC. I kind of agree with everybody else. It's, it's the hours and it's, yeah. it's the kind of, that kind of kills you. And I think, um, when I think about internship and residency, like, would I do it all over again? Honestly, yes, I, I probably would, but, um, I definitely have this, um, and my residents probably know too, when I was a faculty member, like I just felt protective of them because I would see the changes happening in them. And there's got to be some change in the way that we as veterinarians live our lives across the board. And, you know, starting with our, our baby veterinarians who are in internships and residencies, like demand and our better. students too, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was I, telling some students today, like, Hey, your, your shift is over. 
get out. <laughs> like, right. oh, I have this. No, hand that off to the next person. You got to learn how to do that. You got to learn how to, because part of that is trusting the other people and being able to walk away, right? Like, and I realize not everybody feels, some people are like, oh, you, you know, you shouldn't feel guilty for like coming in, working hard and then wanting to be done at the end of the day and wanting to do other things. Like that's really what this is about, right? Like it is healthy and appropriate to have other things in your life that you want to do yep. and that you're excited to go do and you want to finish your work. You want to be efficient, get your stuff done so you can go do that other thing, whether it's gardening or, you know, helping out at the church or, you know, what, whatever, whatever it happens to be. Um, that's normal. That's healthy. Don't let anybody tell you differently that you should feel bad because you want to go after a 12 hour day, you know, or a, a, heaven forbid, an eight hour day. Like, yeah, what? eight to 10 yeah. hours. Like, yeah, yeah, that's that's I remember once in my residency um, leaving, leaving for the day and like the sun was still out. And I remember thinking like, man, I'm getting out kind of early. And then I checked the time and I was like, it was a 12 hour shift. <laughs> and I was like, Woo, what a short day. And I was like, something is wrong with this. Um, you know, I, again, there's things that you put up with temporarily, um, for a variety of reasons. And there's days when you're just like this, this is the day that I'm having. Like, you know, I don't expect that I'm going to leave on time every single day. Um, but I do expect that I'm not going to be made to feel guilty when I get to leave, um, that I just be like, Oh, leaving for the day. Yeah. I put my nine hours in peace out, you know, like, yeah. you're not, you know, but don't let anybody make you feel bad for wanting to have a full life. Um, so, and, and, you know, we, we've all made mistakes over the years and, and everybody listening, you will also, you know, look back and be like, Oh, I should have done this. I should have, should have said yes to this. I should have said no to that. Um, yeah. but, uh, but it, it is okay. Um, and healthy and good to prioritize yourself and in small ways, you know, it doesn't have to be like, all right, I'm, I'm quitting now so that yeah. I can go. Well, you know, part of prioritizing island, yourself is doing a the vet job. school. Yeah. Like, going and yeah. finishing and things like you're making yourself better you're learning so yeah. it's a big most people think it's like oh i just went to school all day i didn't do well, anything it is it's kind of a selfish thing anything. yeah so it's it's for you at the end of the day it is. i didn't i didn't i miss so many yeah. family things you're not over getting the years. an a yeah. in a class so that i don't know so that you get a ribbon you're doing it so that you know what you're doing yeah i'm gonna be good at this but like <laughs> really? yeah i missed like my nieces and nephews like so many birthdays so many holidays in fact there was one year that my family, I'd missed enough holidays. That I remember it was like Thanksgiving or something. Everybody was getting together except for me. And so they printed off photos of my head and put them on popsicle sticks for the family photos. The kids had a blast with it. I am Bobby, you know, put, holding the, my face in front of theirs. That's how many oh, holidays goodness. and family <laughs> gatherings that I missed. I mean, that, that they were joking around. They were actually very supportive and understanding. I was very fortunate. They were like, yeah, we wish you were here. We get it. Um, but it is, it's kind of a selfish thing to do all that. You're like, I'm doing this because I, you know, like Sam said, I want to be, I want to be able to be good at this stuff. And so I'm going to choose to do whatever advanced training I want to, or mm -hmm. even just going to vet school. But it's easy to lose sight and see it as a, uh, a job, yeah. even though you're paying for it. Yeah. Um, still. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What else? Final thoughts? Yeah. Then. I would, I was going to say one thing just cause you brought up family. Cause that was actually something that uh, I would caution people. Like, like if I, again, regret sticking in the, in the, uh, yeah. you know, things in the past, but I feel like an internship and residency, again, it's so easy to get swallowed up. And I mm -hmm. definitely didn't spend, I, I mean, I was far away from my family too, as much mm -hmm. time, but now with things like FaceTime and zoom mm -hmm. and all this stuff, like I, I think that's something that's so quick and easy to put like 10 minutes in mm -hmm. that I, and, and it gets by, you don't even realize it. And it's been like four months since you've talked to, you know, and, and, yeah. you know, your mom might keep calling you and you just kind of keep you're in rounds and, you know, canceling the the call and stuff like that. But um, as like a word of caution to, to anyone else out there, I, I definitely kind of ignored my family more than I should have during internship and residency. And that's like a built in support system that you have, even though they, they might not yeah. be vets either, but yeah. I would. Cause they know you so well and they're, they can mm -hmm. tell you when you, why, why are you doing this, Sam? You're tired every day. You're not usually this tired. You can't handle yeah. this. You need to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll be able that's, to tell that's you why she didn't pick up the phone. Cause she didn't want to hear them say, <laughs> yeah, that tough why love. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had a standing. So when I, um, when I moved to South Africa, I got even further away from my family, but partly because of the time zone differences, like we had a scheduled standing um, it was Skype. This was pre zoom days, but so we had a standing Skype call at okay. Sundays. Yeah. And so that yeah. was kind of what we did. We said, you know, I, I, 
I knew it was like, this is when it's going to be. It was like five o'clock my time. And it was like, they were in their pajamas still kind of. On their end. Um, but we were like, and we didn't talk forever, you know, but it was just like once a week because again, I was in another country and it was, I didn't have like, it wasn't like I could just text back and forth really easily. So we were like, this is when we're going to talk. Um, and that worked really well um, for me because it was easy for me to be homesick at that time too, right? Like, so if you're struggling with that, because you are far away, even if you're not that physically far away, it's still far away because you can't get away all the time. Yeah, you can't um, drive but eight finding, hours. But finding ways to connect, I think is good. Yep. I agree with that. I think I did too much of a, oh, I have an exam that day. I can't go to that wedding when I really could have just asked to take the exam a day early and then gone to see my family. Yeah. Uh, I did too much of like, no, sorry, I'm in school to, and now I look back and I'm like, like I had classmates that um, one of them, I think she traveled to Europe. Uh, she took an extra week from her vacation and went over to Europe with oh. someone. And I remember being like, oh my God, we're in class. And what happened? She's fine. a specialist now. Yep. She's just fine. Right. Yeah. I think, you know? um, so like, it's fine. Like just yes. stop taking Live yourself your life. seriously. And that would be, maybe that was her way of energizing herself. Yeah. Right. Like that was, she was something maybe better did. because she did that. Exactly. And she yeah. did just fine. Yep. So that's, I agree with Sam. I think making a point of not, of realizing life goes on and there's ways you can work around it. And believe it or not, the, you know, professors and faculty that you're working with also believe for the most part, most of them in having <laughs> a work-life balance and they're going to work with you because you're not a child. You're an adult. You're not asking, you don't have to raise your hand to ask to go to the bathroom. Like, you have a life and, and you can incorporate that into, uh, into vet school or even residency. Yes. Carl, did you have something to say? I did. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. sorry, Carl. Were you, no, were, it was no, awesome. no, were you done? <laughs> I was just, <laughs> oh, it was awesome. I was going to just jump on to what Sam said for my final thought about family. Um, Cause there's some students who are married and, or have children that are in school and they want to, do a residency or an internship and they say, or the opposite, they want to have children. They don't want to wait. Say, I don't want to wait four years or five years and it's doable. Yeah. It's extremely hard. It's hard as it is, but it's harder. And I, I can tell you, I say it's doable because I'm doing it now mm -hmm. and plenty of people have come before me that did it. Mm -hmm. And it's an, it doesn't mean you have to put your life on hold. I was talking to Dr. Allen about this when yeah. she asked me, you want to have another child? I was like, definitely, we want to have another one. It's going to end up being in the middle of residency, and that's what happened. But we, my wife and I decided, Rick and I decided that we're not going to put that part of our life on hold while we decide to yep. you know, pursue specialties. Because yeah, it's never a good time. Residency. Right. Right. I mean, it's, this yeah. is it. Like, it was, that's like we saving were, up until you can afford to have children. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that'll never happen. No yeah. such thing. No, <laughs> no. such thing. Like you'll, you you'll never, never have you enough don't. money. You'll never have yeah. enough time. You'll never get enough sleep. So I hundred mean, percent agree ideal. with you, Carl. Yep. I agree with you. I yeah. will say, I think our profession needs to do a better job of supporting people, both just like mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally and being like encouraging, like, yeah, Oh, you're, you're 26. And biologically, this is like the best time of your life to have children. No, you can't have kids during vet school or during internship yeah. or during baloney. <laughs> you know, yeah, now if you choose now. to wait, if good, for, that's fine too. Like, you know, everybody's different, but like, don't, I don't think, um, I, I, I think we, that we as a profession need to do a better job of supporting people whenever yeah. they would like yeah. to have children or scoffing them and being like, you can't do that. You wouldn't be able to do it. It's going to be harder. Well, yeah, like, it's going to be yeah. harder, but maybe I can do it. If yeah. Maybe you can't. Yeah, it's been can. done. Yeah, right. But also can, like, but why can't. can't we be like, Oh cool. You're going to need some time, you know, for maternity or paternity yeah. leave. That seems Heck normal. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. You know, like, okay. Not just six days, yeah. like take some months. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so he's had a C section back on the floor in six What do you days. want? Seven Whoa. days? Jeez, Carl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least ten. Oh, <laughs> greedy. Greedy. <laughs> ten ten working days though. <laughs> exactly. Ten working Sometimes days. it's just ten straight days, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, I think our, our profession does a terrible. That's one of the things my plan when I when I started the residency here at Virginia Tech is to build in that flexibility and just have it like this is yeah. a known thing. Like life happens. Oh, you, you have a, yep. a parent who got sick and you need time off to go take care of them. Cool. We have we have yeah. a, a way that we can adapt to that. It's expected and normal for life to happen, and you know we can we can make that work. And it's it's not necessarily obvious and easy how to do it, but it's important. And we just need yeah. to figure out how to, how to do that. And 
anyway. So yeah. So anybody out there considering it, like make it work, you know, and if you, yep. you're not surrounded by people who are supportive, find new people. <laughs> I know that sounds simple and it's not always that easy, but <laughs> you should it. try to find new people. <laughs> that's, that's my advice because as Carl said, you can go anywhere you want. You don't, you can, can. find a job, you know, you can, you can create a new job for yourself yeah. um, because veterinary medicine is such a flexible profession and you can pivot and you can, you know, reinvent yeah. it. So don't settle for something that isn't good enough. Yeah. I think one of the Virginia to. tech deans had a, uh, a quote. How many do we said. have? I don't know. He just <laughs> told me, um, I was talking to him one day. <laughs> we were just, hanging just out, hanging out. Um, and they were like, do you know what they call the person that graduates first in the class at a vet school? Doctor. And now they call them the valedictorian. Oh, okay. Do you know what they call the person that graduates last? Also a doctor. Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Way to ruin it. Well, we've all heard that. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. heard that. The person, yeah, the, the, the person who lasts in their class, you know what you call him? You call him doctor. Yeah. 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 It's very inspirational. Yeah. It's not like getting drafted last in the NFL. It's like, oh, yeah, you're not going to play. You're a professional I'll, football player. I'll, I'll take, take it. Yeah, I'll take, I'll that take that it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're only yeah. making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to sit the. Yeah. No, you probably don't make anything. You don't make anything. Practice squad. Yeah. I'm What's making the practice squad, bro. I'm about to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't Shoot. get. You don't get paid if you get drafted. I don't Put understand. Uh, if you get drafted last, you don't really? get paid. Well, because you don't make the team. But you got Wait, drafted. I'm making the squad. Yeah. Oh, only the. I guess I don't know what being drafted. Two rounds. I think only the first two rounds make money guaranteed. guaranteed oh guaranteed money yeah. you'll, you'll, oh. i was like i, do, I fully don't them, understand what do drafting is then <laughs> okay yeah. a that's lot of them don't make the final roster so yeah. gotcha they that's, get released it's an option to try out is what you get yeah <laughs> option try out. Or yeah, least, yeah. I don't know. and i think that might be a good place to end <laughs> sure option to try all right uh yeah thank you guys for coming on to chat about stuff. Of it was so good to see everybody. Thanks for sharing your stories, for getting a little awkward and personal there and again. I don't know how we started talking about poop, but we did. And, Sorry, that uh, was and me. It worked, Sorry. And, I, like, and it wasn't even baby poop. <laughs> There's a baby and it wasn't even that. Uh, anyhow, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope uh, that you guys will, will come back for more discussions. And uh, yeah, Please. thanks again. It was good to see you guys. See y'all later. See ya.